you, Lord Jesus. In the mighty, blessed name of Jesus, Lord, we come this morning, Lord, and we unite our faith together, Lord God. We, we unite our faith together to welcome you here, Lord, with us this morning, to welcome your presence here, Lord God, to help us, Lord God, worship you, to help us acknowledge you, to help us, Lord God, give you first place in this day, in this service, in this sanctuary. Lord, we give you first place, Lord. We choose to give you first place, Lord. We choose, Lord, to give you first place. We choose to make you first this morning, Lord. We choose to, Lord. We choose, Father God. Lord, we choose to serve you this morning, Father. We choose to worship you this morning, Lord. We choose to acknowledge you, Father. We choose to lay aside our thoughts and our heavy weights, Lord God. We choose to lay aside everything that was so easily beset us this morning, Lord. We choose to lay it aside, Lord God, that we may, Lord God, bask in your presence, Lord God, through the, through the praise and worship and through the preached word, Lord God. We will bask in your presence, Lord God. We choose, Lord God, to lay aside every weight that was so easily beset us this morning, Lord God. Lord, we choose to lift up holy hands before our holy God. We choose to lift up our hearts to our holy God. We choose, Lord God, to open our mouth and praise our holy God. We choose this morning, Lord. We choose this morning to serve you, Lord. We choose, Father. We choose to acknowledge you this morning, Father, with our whole heart, Lord God. Lord, we choose to. Oh, Lord, we choose to acknowledge you with all our heart, Lord God. We choose to dance before you, Lord God. We choose to praise before you, Lord. Oh, we choose you this morning, Father. With every fiber of our being, Lord, we choose you this morning. We choose you over the weight of the world, Lord. We choose you, Father, this morning, Lord. So we thank you, Lord God, that you will have your way in this service, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you will be with those who will sing praises to you, Lord God. Those who that will encourage us in our praise and our worship to you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you put them, Lord God, to help us, Lord God, enter into your presence, Lord God. But Lord, our eyes and our focus are on you, Lord God, not them, Father, in Jesus' name. Our eyes and our focus are fixed on you, Lord God. So we thank you for that this morning, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for those who have bring the praise and worship before us, Lord God. And we will, Lord God, participate, Lord God, in the spirit, Lord God, in the praise and worship as it come forth, Lord God. We will participate in your service this morning. We choose to participate in your service, Lord. We choose to lift up holy hands. We choose to lift up our hearts to you this morning, Lord. We choose, Lord God. Lord, we choose you over this world, Lord God, over the things of our past, over our trials and tribulations, over our heavy weights, Lord. We choose you this morning, Lord God. We choose you this morning, Father, in Jesus' name. So we thank you for the praise and worship that will come forth this morning. We thank you that it will fall on hearts and minds that are receptive, Lord God. We thank you for that today. Lord, we thank you for the preached word as it, as it will come forth this morning. We thank you that the preached word would come forth, Lord God, full of fire, full of encouragement, full of direction, full of instruction, full of rebuke, full of love, Lord God. We thank you for your word this morning as it come forth. Lord, we thank you that it will fall on hearts that are receptive, minds that are open, hearts that are spirits that are willing, Lord. We thank you for that this morning. 
We thank you that Pastor Terrence has studied and prepared. Lord God, we thank you that he will, has rightly divided, the, uh, he will rightly divide the word of God, Lord God, as he's, Lord God, sent forth it with his tongue, Lord God, the pen of a ready writer, Lord God. We thank you this morning for the word, Lord God, as it go forth, Lord God. It will fall on hearts that are receptive, Lord God, willing that will take the word and when they get home, they will scan back over the word in their minds or on their notepad, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you that we are doers of the word of God and not just hearers only, Lord God. We thank you that we are doers of the word, Father. We are doers of the word, Lord, and not hearers only, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for that today. Thank you for the songstress. Thank you for Pastor Terrence as he, as he will preach the word. And Lord God, I just thank you for Pastor Terrence, Lord God, as you use him in the community, Father God, as he will go forth in the community and do the work that you called him to do, Father God, for the hour, Lord. I thank you that you'll use our pastor in a great and mighty way in the community of Opelika, Lord God. You bless them and you keep them and you protect him, Lord, in Jesus' name, as he go forth, Lord God, to do what you called him to do in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you for that today. And Father God, we thank you for the sound ministry. We pray your presence, Lord God, hovers over our sound ministry, Lord God. We pray that the sound ministry and the media ministry, Lord God, will work in perfection, Lord God. We thank you that your spirit hovers over that area, Lord God. And Lord God, nothing, Lord God, unlike the spirit of the living God, will penetrate that area, Father God. I thank you that their mind are focused, their hands and fingers, Lord God, are ready to do the work, Lord God. I thank you that they are in tune, Lord God. God to the spirit of God. They're in tune to this praise and worship. They are in tune to Pastor Terry, Lord God. So they're in tune and the spirit of the living God hovers over that area. We thank you for the little kids as they come in. Lord God, we thank you that you bless them, you keep them, and you protect the children ministry. I thank you for every little feet, Lord God, that will come, Lord God, to be taught of you, Father. I thank you that those teachers have prepared themselves, Lord God, for the teaching of the little children, Lord God. Because you said, suffer them not to come unto you, for such is the kingdom of heaven, Lord God. For such is the kingdom of heaven. I thank you, Lord God, that we all come to you as a little child, Lord God. We all come to you with childlike faith this morning, Lord God. Believing you to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can act, hope, or say in our lives, Lord. We come to you this morning thanking you, Lord. Thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for every facet of this service, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, because you are welcome, Lord. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. You are so welcome here. And no other spirit but the spirit of the living God is welcome here. No other spirit but that of the living God. And so, Father, we will acknowledge you. We will worship you. We will praise you. We will call upon your name. We will serve the living God. We thank you today, Lord. Lord, we are thankful. We are a thankful people, Lord God. And we are so thankful, Lord God, that you inhabit our praises, Lord God. You inhabit the preach word, Lord God. You inhabit every facet of this church service this morning, Lord. Receive ye the honor. Receive ye the glory. Receive ye the, ye the praise. Receive ye the honor, Lord, because the honor is due to you, Father, and no other, Lord. We thank you this morning, Father. We honor you, Lord. We honor you today, Lord. In the blessed name of Jesus, Lord. In the blessed name of Jesus. We say yes and amen to your will. Yes and amen to your plan. Yes and amen to your way. We acknowledge you, Lord, with our whole heart today. And we say welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you are in agreement with that prayer, say hallelujah. hallelujah. We have come this morning to magnify the name of our Lord and Savior. Yes. And today we remember that he, he, his blood was shed for us and that he still reigns. Hallelujah. He hallelujah. reigns in us. 
and he reigns in our lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So come on, clap your hands with us this morning. Hallelujah. As we declare that he still reigns. Glory to God. Come on and put your hands on. Yeah, if you know it, sing along with us this morning. Come on, let me get that blood moving.
Great mighty 
There is no greater name than your name, Father. And that your name, God, there is power. There is change. There is deliverance. Your name, Father, it causes a shift in the atmosphere. We are.
Sing our God. Our God is he reigns, he reigns forevermore. 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 One more time, everybody sing with us. Sing our God. Our declare that you reign father you reign in this place father so we honor you this morning and as we come lord in remembrance of what you've done for us lord how you laid down your life how you sacrifice that we may be a given life and given to us eternally father so we bless you this morning we honor you father thank you father god for sending your son jesus that we, Father God, may live eternally yes. in and through him. We thank you this morning, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Who will stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who will stand against the king? <laughs> no one can. Hallelujah. No one will. No one can. No oh, one will. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, oh, yes, Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. For those of you that are here, you know, this is a time and opportunity for us to commune with the Lord. We get a chance to have supper with Jesus today. And so you should have been handed to you, it should have been handed to you a, a, a communion cup. If you have that, I ask that you have it. I know you've already, you've already been standing for such a long time, but in reverence of this, this moment and in reverence of God and what we're about to do, I'm going to ask you to stand for about another three or five more minutes. Amen. If you're able, stand for another three to five minutes. I know you may be tired, and, uh, but you know what? <clears throat> if we can't stand before the king, then we probably will find it hard to bow before the king. You didn't, you'll get that later on. If we can't stand for the king, you're going to find it hard to bow before the king. The Bible says that it's appointed that, 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 that the day comes where, where at the name of Jesus, every name. Every, every one, everyone's going to bow before him. And so we can't stand before him today then. It's going to be really hard for you to bow before him because you're going to do it outside of your own will. Amen. So I'm asking you with your own will today to stand before the Lord. <clears throat> this is an opportunity for us to commune with the Lord. Some of us know it as the Lord's Supper. Some of us know it as, the, as communion. And, and so we want to take this opportunity. We do this often, uh, once a month. Uh, at a minimum, um, but as we read the word, word today, that we don't have to do it just once a month. That is done as often as we think about the Lord Savior, our, our Savior, as we think about Him, and as we, you know, um, think about the big, the, the great price that He paid. And so we do it. You can do it every day. Do it five times a day if you want. You know, there's no limit to doing it. 
What's important is that when we do it, that we remember the sacrifice. And so I'm going to refer to, uh, in the New Living Translation, I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And for those of you that are joining us virtually, some of you may and may not have what we have here, but uh, I, I, I want to tell you that this is just a symbol of what we're doing. So it doesn't matter that you have exactly what we have. I want you to grab yourself something, a piece of bread, a, pre, a, a cracker, a cookie, whatever it is. And we, we want you to sanctify. We want you to consecrate that, that item to the Lord. And the same thing with what we have here. We have what symbols the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is just some juice. Uh, but whatever you may have in your, your cupboard, whatever you may have in your refrigerator, whatever you may have, take it consecrated unto the Lord. And, and let's symbolize his burial, his death, and his resurrection today as we commune with the Lord. And so I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the New Living Translation. And I'm going to begin at the 23rd verse. <clears throat> the 23rd verse begins and it says, for I pass on to you. And this is Paul speaking, the Apostle Paul, and he's speaking to the church of Corinth. He says, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. <clears throat> An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink this cup. You are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Verse 27 goes on and it says, so anyone who eats this bread <clears throat> or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if ye eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. Verse 31 says this, but if we would examine ourselves, if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that he will so, so, so that we will not be condemned along with the word. That word discipline means we're being convicted and in our conviction, God disciplines us. Not physically, but because of the spirit of God that lives in us. It convicts us. And when we're convicted, it's a discipline and we're moved to do what God is unctioning us to do. And so I'm asking you all, if you have the condiments in your hand, we're going to do exactly what our instructions gave us to do in terms of uh, taking the bread, which is, it symbolizes the body of Christ, which was broken for us. We take it, we give thanks. Father, thank you for this which symbolizes the body of Christ, which was broken for us, God. It was broken. It was beaten. It was scorned. It was bruised, bruised and abused for us. We take it and we break it to symbolize the broken body of Jesus Christ. Take and eat all of it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that in the same manner he took the cup. And we lift it up before the Lord and we say, Father, thank you for this, which symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the blood that covers our sins, the multiple, our multitude of sins. Got so many sins, Father, things that we've done and have not done, things that we, we, we're aware of. We've done it, but we may not be aware of it, Father. But we thank you that it's the blood of Jesus that covers it. And that regardless of what we did, God, that this, there's more power in the blood than in our sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. And because of the power of the blood, Father, we thank you, God, that we now are forgiven of our sins. And we take it, Father, and we give thanks in your name. Take ye and drink all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that in, in Matthew chapter 26, when it actually records Jesus with the, with the disciples having the Last Supper, they said that... that um, 
Um, they sang a song. We're not going to sing a song today. We're going to move on. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We'll be back. Amen. In a moment. God bless you. I told y'all a couple of minutes, didn't I? About to keep you about five more. Amen. That's the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to, as Pastor said, we were supposed to sing a selection here, but we're going to move forward. Amen. 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 <laughs> Please enjoy the rest of the service. Yes, it's on. My name is Liz, and I'm here to welcome you this morning to the Bridge Church of Alabama. We serve an awesome God, don't we? Yes, amen, and he's worthy of our praise. I would like to acknowledge any guests that we may have here with us today. If this is your first time visiting with us, just please wave your hand so that we can see you and we have something that we would like to put in your hands. So keep your hands up until the greeter can give that to you. Amen. We would also like to ask you, if you would, to remain just a few minutes after service so that uh, Pastor Terrence and Pastor Latrilla could personally greet you and welcome you to the Bridge Church of Alabama. Church family, let's do that again. Let's make our guests welcome. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you chose to come here. You could have chosen anywhere else to be, but you're here this morning. And I don't think it's by accident. You're here by divine appointment. God's got something special in store for you. Amen. Amen. And I would also like to acknowledge anyone that's visiting us virtually for the first time. If this is your first time tuning in to the Bridge Church of Alabama, just look in the comment section and give us a wave so that we will know that this is your first time here and someone from the church will get in touch with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements today. First, I would like to recognize our June birthdays and anniversaries. This month, we have two birthdays the month of June. We have LaCarvius Williams. His birthday is June the 6th. And Brother Carlton Clifton, whose birthday is June the 15th. Let's wish them a happy birthday, family. Amen. Yes, happy birthday. And also, we have some anniversaries this month. Uh, Brother Marlon and Sister Annie, they celebrated their anniversary on June the 2nd. Glory. Yes, amen. And today, June the 4th, is Sabrina and David's anniversary. And uh, Tyvoria and her husband Carl will be celebrating their anniversary on June the 20th. So let's just wish all of them an abundance of blessings on their anniversary. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Also, our next Women of Purpose Fellowship will be Saturday, June the 10th. So don't forget to check your email and text messages and respond to the evite that has already been sent out. We will be meeting at 11 o'clock, and there will be more detailed information coming soon. Ladies, don't forget our first virtual conference planning meeting. That will be June the 12th at 6.30 p.m. 
via Google Meet. And that meeting is going to be held every second Monday of the month thereafter, unless there is uh, otherwise notified. So if you have not received the link in order to join that Google Meet, would you see Marcia Corbett after service? Anyone that's interested in joining our planning committee meeting for the upcoming women's conference, see Marcia if you don't have that link for that Google Meet and you would like to join. Well, we already have the date set for our 2024 uh, conference, and that is May the 2nd through May the 5th. So keep those dates in mind. And like I said last week, start praying about that now. It's not too soon to start praying about that. So let's just pray that God, God's will will be done and that this conference would be even a bigger success than our last one was. Amen? Amen. All right. And marriage ministry will meet on June the 24th. So keep that date open. Mark your calendars for June the 24th, and more details is coming soon concerning that meeting as well. And I would like to remind you, as we do every week, to constantly check your emails and uh, your text messages for evites or any information that is pertinent to the ministry. That is our means of communicating with everyone. And so be sure and check your emails Check your text messages, and if anything requires a response, please do so, because though it's so important that you respond, and that way we can adequately prepare for whatever that event is. And um, with that in mind, I just want to say again, just check your emails, check your text messages. And there are some things that we have on an ongoing basis. I would like to remind everyone that we have Bible study every Wednesday night beginning at 6.30 p.m. here at the church, Central Standard Time. That Bible study is in-house as well as virtually, and you can join that Bible study every Wednesday night via Facebook Live. Corporate prayer is here at the church every first and third Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. So please come out and join us every first and third Saturday for corporate prayer. You know, the Bible tells us that one of us could put a 1,000 to flight, but two of us can put 10,000 to flight. So when we come <clears throat> together corporately to pray, to pray, that puts the enemy at flight. You know, he gets scared when a group of us get together. And when we get together, with one mind and one accord. So let's keep those dates in mind. Every first and third Saturday at 11 o'clock here at the church. And we also have prayer every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. That's virtual prayer via Google Meet. So keep those dates in mind. Amen? Amen. 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 That concludes our morning announcements. I'm still here, didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's time for our offertory message. You know, I was thinking, you know, for, for so long, tradition has taught us how to give. And coming up as a child, I never heard the word tithe before. I didn't know what a tithe was. They didn't talk about that in the church that I came up in. We had what they call class leaders. And on the weekend before church service, they would go around to all the members' houses and they would collect dues. Church salaries, that's what they call it. They would collect dues. We knew nothing about tithe and offerings. These men came around with their little notebooks and they would collect church salary. They would write your name down. And on Sunday mornings, they would get up, Sister Liz Hill, 
50 cent, you know, or whatever. They would read it out every Sunday. So when we learn better, we should do better. We have learned better, so let us do better. That was when I was a child, and that's how they did it back then. They did what they knew to do. But as my parents and as we learned better, we began to do better. Our heart and our attitude should be in a constant state of transformation. We return our tithes, and we give an offering, not because we have to, Amen. but because we want to. Yes. We do that because we love God, and our desire should always be to please him. The more one-on-one -on -one time we spend with God, the more intimate our relationship becomes with him. And in that intimacy, we learn more and more about God. We learn about his heart, how he wants us to do things, what's expected of us. And, you know, we do these things because, like I said, it's not because we have to. God doesn't require that of us. There's only one thing that he requires of us. That's to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's what he requires of us. So we can do so much better than what we are doing. And as we go about, the whole purpose is to transform our heart. You know, I said all of that to get to just this one point. We've heard the word radical so many times. You know, it's used a lot, especially in politics. And you hear about the radical left, the radical right, with this upcoming election. And that could be a good thing, and it could be a bad thing. It's depending upon what you're radical about. You know, um, I was thinking about um, that word radical, and I thought about a verse of scripture in the Bible where Jesus required something of someone in the Bible, and it was pretty radical. The word radical is something that's different from the usual. It's different from what's traditional. Another good word for radical is extreme, something that's extreme. And I was reading in Matthews chapter 19 of the story about the rich young ruler. We're all familiar with that. Um, he asked Jesus, what is it that I have to do in order to inherit eternal life? And what Jesus told him, he went down, he started talking about what we call the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, you should not commit adultery, you should honor your parents. He was telling the rich young ruler all these things that you need to do. And what the rich young ruler said was, Lord, I've done all those things. Since my youth, I've already done all of that. And so Jesus came back to him. Let's look at Matthews chapter 19, and I want to go all the way down to verse 21. And I want that in the Amplified Version. Uh, after the rich young ruler had said, I've done all those things, Jesus answered him, and he said in the Amplified, if you wish to be perfect, that is, have the spiritual maturity that accompanies godly character with no moral or ethical deficiencies, go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me, becoming my disciple, believing and trusting in me, and walking the same path of life that I walk. You know, this was one case where Jesus endorsed radical generosity. Jesus knew that in order for this young ruler to give radically, he had to have a transformed heart. And so that's why he told the rich young ruler to sell all that he had. His possessions weren't the problem, but his unwillingness to part with financial blessings indicated that his heart was tied to earthly things. There's no problem with us having earthly things. 
The problem comes when those earthly things have us. God is not concerned about He wants us to have things. He wants us to have these things, but he don't want them to have us. And that was the problem with the rich young ruler. He walked away, the scripture says, he walked away grieving because he obviously treasured his possessions more than his relationship with God. He obviously did that. And see, God, I was even thinking about the widow that gave her all. God didn't require that of her, but she gave. She gave radically because that was all she had. But God knew, and she knew she had a relationship with God. And God knew that her heart was in the right place. You know, he did not require her to give radically, but she did. And so uh, I would like for us to just spend a few moments before we return our tithes and we give our offerings and look at what we have. God does not care how much you have. That's not the problem. The problem is what you have, does it have you? And so let's just stop before we do that and think about what we are about to do and make sure if God asked you today, I want you to give radically. What if he asked you to give like he did this rich young ruler? What would your response be? Would it be, yes, Lord, or would it be, oh, my gosh, I can't do that? You know, so just stop and think about it. Where is your heart? And we need to learn that the more time we spend with God, the more our heart is being transformed. Amen? Amen. 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 So before we do that, spend just a few minutes thinking about what you're about to do and why you are about to do it. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We desire to give. We desire to please you. We want to spend more time with you. And we love you, Lord, not because of what you can do for us, but because of what you've already done. Father, if you never do another thing, you've already done more than enough. And we thank you for that now. In your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, we have several ways to give. You can text your donation if you desire to 84321, or you can visit us online at thebridgechurchofal.com and go to our donate page there and follow the prompts there for giving. Amen.
What would I do in life? Where would I go? How would I handle things? All that I
nothing. Look, I just do what the Lord tell me to do, man. <laughs> I just do what the Lord tell me to do. Good morning, everyone. Bless you. Thank you so much for being here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Man, stop laughing at me, man. I got to get serious after a while, bro. Man, for those of you that are joining me, I am the senior pastor here at the Bridge Church of Alabama. I'm Pastor T, and uh, it's just a joy to have you here with us this morning. For those of you that are joining us virtually, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's me again. I'm, 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 I'm not going to say I'm up to my tricks, you know. I'm just up to my father's business. And so, you know, I believe that the Lord has a word today. And um, for some of us, we just kind of like need to, I guess, get a better understanding of what he's trying to uh, relay to us. <laughs> and so I just did what the Lord told me to do this morning. And so welcome to my construction site. Amen. Welcome to my construction site. Yeah, we got some danger signs and everything like that. Um, wanted to uh, just take an opportunity before I get started. I wanted to take an opportunity. Number one, say a um, happy birthday to our June babies that are that are celebrating this month. Happy birthday to you all and to our anniversary um, um, couples covenant anniversary covenant. Couples, covenant is that thing that where we made a promise that we we keep. Right. It's covenant. We regardless of what happens, regardless of what what went on, it's covenant. Amen. Meaning that you know I'm I'm in it for the long run, Amen. and uh, as long as God is with us, we are gonna make it. Amen. Covenant, covenant. Amen. And then I wanted to take an opportunity to say thank you to everyone from last week. You all surprised me last week as I celebrated my 61st birthday, in, in the month of May. And um, it was a surprise for you all to uh, celebrate me with the cake and, you know, everything, man. I just, you know, I mean, just, I mean, I was just so blessed. And I just want to say thank you. We have uh, some thank you cards that are coming. But I wanted to personally tell you all, thank you so much for blessing me. It was such an honor and a privilege, you know, just to be amongst God people. And just to say, you know, to, for me to still be here and to say thank you for celebrating me on my birthday. It means so much to me. You know, uh, a few years ago, I didn't know if I was going to make it, but God, but God, and here I am, man, 61, you know, some of you that's here, I understand we got some first-time guests here today, right? Wave your hand, first-time guests, yeah, what's going on? You know, y'all saw me over here dancing like I was like 41, right? Man, I'm 61, 61 in a bullet. That's what we say, bro. That's the old school. They don't know nothing about that, bro. 61 in a bullet. I mean, I'm tougher than tough, baby. But anyway, I had a chance to celebrate uh, my birthday, and I am just, just want to say thank you all, you know, for just helping me in that celebration. Amen? Amen. 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 And y'all saw, you know, some of the gifts that I was given, and, and uh, First Lady, you know, uh, Pastor Latrilla saw, you know, I was trying to hide some of the stuff from her. And, you know, some things she's just attracted to. <laughs> On oh, that coconut cake, man. Woo! See what I mean? She told me some man. <laughs> She don't even eat coconut cake, but this time she ate some coconut cake. Can I get someone to pass that to my, uh, my media person back there, my brother? <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, we had a chance to enjoy, I mean, just so much and so much. Uh, um, so much is happening. I don't know if they announced it, but we are having our men's conference this coming in August, and it's going to be our inaugural men's conference. Yes. And the Lord is just is still, he's just dropping stuff. We were going somewhere on Friday, and, and the Lord was just dropping stuff in my spirit about this conference. And so I'm excited. I know Deacon, Deacon Carlos, you, had, you know, have mentioned to me that you're excited, and, yes, and I believe all of us are, are excited. And so I'll be mindful of the dates, men, that we have put down there that we need to meet again. We got some other things going on. And I want to invite our first-time guest, which you are no longer a guest. If you're here longer than five minutes, you're family. So... <laughs> No longer guests, you're here. And so we want to invite you to our next men's meeting. You know, we're talking about the conference, but we also do some teaching and things like that. So if you're going to be in the area, you know, you are more than welcome to, to come over. And I normally do it in, in, at my house. And the men come together and we join up. We have breakfast and we, we talk and we, we laugh. And we some of us, you know, may even have times where we cry. You know, but it's all, it stays in the house, you know. I don't know where they got that term. What goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas, but, I, but what goes on in the Nolan's house stays in the Nolan's house. And so it, it's a free zone. 
it's a free zone and we can uh, we can come in and, and share with one another and don't have to worry about you know your business being put out there it's a no judgment zone and so I just welcome you sir if you're here and I would also like if you have an opportunity first time guests to, to hang around I would love to personally just meet you and greet you personally if you have that opportunity to do so and if it gets too cold in here like I said your family now if it gets too cold tell somebody cut the tip it's too cold up in here Turn things down, you know. Give me a blanket. Give me something, you know. You know, because y'all family now. We don't believe in uh, in visitors. Visitors come to your house, and and you know, visitors come. They ain't welcome, you know. So we don't have visitors here. We either have guests, and then you don't stay. You don't remain a guest for a long time. After you come in for a few minutes, you family. And if you never come back again, guess what? We see you out there in the streets. You still family. Amen. 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 Y'all ready for the word this morning? Amen. Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this house. We thank you for what you're doing in this season in our lives. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have committed to us. And we receive it now. Father, we pray that the word that we speak tonight or today, God, will go into the ears of your people. And we thank you, God, that it will go and it will be deposited as seed into their heart. God, we thank you, God. You said that the word of God is a seed. And God, as we speak today, we're speaking the words out of your word. And we pray that your word will go into the hearts of your people and that it will be deposited and that we shall receive a harvest thereafter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, like I said, man, the Lord has been doing some things in my life, and I've got some things that I want to uh, share with you today. Uh, in case you are still wondering what's going on, this is this is my construction site, man. This is my construction site, and what this symbolizes is that that there is work in progress. There's work in progress. This is my construction site, and guess what? There's work in progress. And in case someone in here really don't know it right now, that we're 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 all in the construction business. All of us, each and every one of us is in the construction business. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. If you have given your life to the Lord, guess what? You're under construction. <laughs> you are under construction. And so you may think, you know, you made it and you built the way you want to be built. But if you've given your life to the Lord, the Bible says that your footsteps are ordered by him. And if you built your life and you think you're done, guess what? God's not done with you yet. No, as long as we're still here on this earth and we're still breathing, guess what? There's still work to be done. And so we're still under construction. And we're still under construction. And, and so I, I, I want to go. I'm going to start off with some scripture. I'm, I'm looking at the time. And, of course, you know, we read to feed. We don't read to finish. And so I'm going, I don't know, in terms of the time, I'm saying that I, I believe that this may carry on to next week because I'm not going to rush this word. Uh, I just really believe that there's something in this that someone needs to hear today. And I believe that God wants to. Uh, pull some things out of us as well as deposit some things in us. I believe that today God wants to take the hammer and those nails that may still be sticking out a little bit. He might want to nail those things in a little bit tighter. Uh, I believe that he may be taking that crow hammer and some of those things that have been shut down too tight. He's going to take that. What's that crowbar? You know, crowbar that stuff up out of, out of us because some of us don't want to let it go. So he's got to take a crowbar, and crowbar that thing up out of us. And we holding on to it. And God is saying, no, it's time to let it go. And so we're under construction. You know, sometimes in, in, in construction, you know, you have to tear down some stuff in order to rebuild some stuff. And so I don't know what site you're working with, but I know that I'm a work in progress and that God had to come in and he had to tear some stuff down. And I know for a fact he is still tearing some stuff down. But what I love about the Lord is that as he's tearing some stuff down, he's building some stuff up and that there's never going to be a void left in my wherever he tears down. He's placing something up in there. So there's not a void. So I don't feel like I'm walking around in the dark. Like Who cut the lights off? You know, he's always leading me. He's, he's always leading me. So I want to go to first Corinthians, my brother. First Corinthians, uh, 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 brother uh, Quint. First Corinthians, chapter three, and the New Living Translation. If you're taking notes, First uh, Corinthians, chapter three, verse nine through sixteen. Little wordy, but it's some good words, especially when we're coming out of the New Living Translation. It's a good word. First Corinthians, chapter three, verse nine through the sixteen through sixteen. Here we go. It says, "For we are both God's workers." 
Now, Paul is talking, but he's talking to he's not just talking to the disciples. He's not talking to the other apostles. He's talking to the Christian. He's talking to the Corinthians. He's talking to those that have given his, their life to the Lord. And he's simply saying that we that for, for we are both God's workers, yeah. all of us workers. That's not singular. It's plural, uh -huh. meaning that there's more than one out there. Right. So he's talking to all of us. We are God's workers and you are God's field. Woo. You are God's, there it is, building. You're God's building. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now, others are building on it. So now he's saying that, look, because of the grace that's given to me, what God has allowed me to do, he says, look, I, I, I've come in and I, I've laid some foundation. But then he goes on and he says, but whoever is building now, but he says, now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. Be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. So he's saying, now, now don't try to go in and try to reestablish a new foundation. The foundation's already been built. And if you're not sure, look, what the world is already doing, the world is already trying to establish a new foundation. That's why they go in and they've changed the word of God. And they started making rules and laws and saying, oh, well, the Bible says this, but we don't have to live like that. You know, and so they're basically trying to change the foundation on how we're as we as people were supposed are supposed to live. And he, Paul is saying, no, <laughs> the foundation is already built. The truth is already established. You can't go in and change the truth and say, now this is the way we're going to live because this is right. The Bible says that there's a, there's a way that seems right in the man's eyes, but the way thereof is death, is destruction. And God, Paul is saying, no, the foundation is already built. Jesus has already built the foundation. So don't go in and try to reestablish the foundation. And then he goes on in verse 12. He says, anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials. And he says that there are many things at your disposal to build Upon this foundation. And he goes on, he says, there's gold, there's silver, there's jewels, wood, hay, or straw. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I like it how he goes from, you know, the, the most precious uh, uh, diamonds and stones to the least expensive. He says, but on that, but on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. He's simply saying, he's saying that, look, you can go ahead and build on it. I've given you up permission to build. Jesus has given you permission to build on it. But be very, very careful because whatever material you use to build upon it, guess what? Fire is going to reveal whether or not it's, going, it's good enough. It says fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. Ooh, the fire is going to determine if a person's work has any value. Value. We're doing a lot of good things, but are we doing the right things? We're doing a lot of good things in church. We're doing a lot of good things in our life. We're doing a lot of good things, but are the things that we're doing the right things? And sometimes you can be doing a lot of good things, but if it ain't the right thing, then guess what? You're, you're using the wrong material. And so what you should be using in terms of maybe rock or stone, now you're using hay or clay. Right. And God is saying that whatever, you, whatever, whatever foundation, whatever you build on this foundation, be very careful because it's going to be tested. Mm, right. He goes on and says, we're doing a lot. Of, and so, uh, um, uh, so it talks about the value. And if a person's work, it says that the fire will show if a person's work has any value. Because if, if, if it doesn't have any, if you don't build with the right material, the value of those things are going to be diminished. So you may think you got something going on, but get the moment that it's being tested, it's, the value of it is going to be diminished. You know, when you buy a brand new car, they say that when you drive off the lot, it what? Depreciate. It depreciates. Uh -huh. The moment you drive off the lot, you're going to be gone for one hour and you know you ain't did nothing but a quarter of a mile. And it has already depreciated. You take it back, say, I want to trade the car in. Now, I know in so, so, some circumstances the dealership may work with you. But in all reality, keep that car for a day or two. Keep it for a week or two and try to take it somewhere else. It's going to depreciate. 
And it's the same thing with if you're building our life, you're building upon this foundation, whatever you're using, be careful that it doesn't depreciate. Verse 14 says, if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burnt up, the builder will, su will, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. You, you all know that there's a scripture in the Bible that says that, the, that the, 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 the just or the righteous shall scarcely be saved. The, 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 the ones that are saved, that we're saved and we're singing and we're shouting hallelujah. The Bible tells us, in fact, go, go to 1 Peter, bro. Um, uh, uh, Brother Quentin, go to 1 Peter um, chapter 4, verse 18. In the um, in the new living in the uh, let's go to the new King James version, new King James version. First Peter chapter four, verse 18. This is now if the righteous one is scarcely saved. There it is. Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? He's saying that the righteous is going to scarcely be saved. And so when we go back to first Corinthians chapter three, verse verse 14, that's what he's talking about here. Verse 15 says, but if the work is burnt up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. You may still get in, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Basically, he's saying, be very careful what you're building this foundation on because you can mess around here and don't make it in. And if you do make it in, you barely getting in. Based on his grace, his mercy, we're barely getting in. And what Paul is doing here. As he's talking about this, he's using a, a, and I heard this term before, it's called a construction analogy. A construction analogy. He's using uh, 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 this building analogy, this construction analogy, um, as, as he's really talking about our lives. And he's talking about how you're going to build your life. How do you build your life has a lot to do with how you start off and how you end. How you build your life. In, 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 in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus talks about this. He talks about, he said there was a house. He said, he, he talks about, uh, in fact, let's go, man, I love scripture, you all. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. I love scripture because I want you to be able to see it. And if you're taking notes, I want you to be able to, 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 be able to write it down. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And, and we're going to go in the NIV version. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. He says, this is Jesus. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down. The streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on a rock. Then he goes on and says in verse 26, he says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a what? Like a foolish man. It's OK to say it. It's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Verse 27 says the rain came, the rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with great crash. And the Bible says that when he was finished, that, he, that the crowds was amazed at the things that he was saying. The structure of your house will, in due time, be tested. I mean, we're using an analogy here in terms of what we're talking about, a natural house. But I'm not talking, the God is not talking about your house house. He's talking about the house that you built, this temple. He's talking about the life. He's talking about the life that you live and the life that you build upon. Do you know that every decision that you make, there's a there's a response, what they call a cause and effect. And so whatever decision that you decide, whatever you decision that you make, there's going to be some type of effect based on the decision that you make. And for some of us, we make some decisions. And I, I've mentioned this before. Sometimes we make uh, uh, emotional decisions you know, based on temporary circumstances, but we, but we make decisions and they're permanent. These are decisions that now we have to live with based on a temporary circumstance. And we make a decision that now our whole life has changed. The Bible says this, that, 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 that God 
orders our footsteps. It's not that he orders our footsteps. Literally, he orders our decisions. He orders our decisions. He orders our footsteps. He, but that means he's ordering our decisions. When we allow him to, he comes in and he orders, he, he, he operates in our mind and he gives us the thoughts that we ought to have. And he helps us in our decision making process. And so while we, as we're building on this, this home, as we're building on this life of ours, we have to be very cautious of what we're building on. The structure of our house will in due time be tested. And depending on how well it does in the storm, how many of you know that there's a storm of life? Oh, yeah. If you've never experienced a storm in life, there's going, there, there are storms in life that come. And if you, and depending on how well it does in the storm, will determine how well it was built. Depending on how well you're able to stand in the middle of the storm. I know when we first built our home here in, in Opelika, um, we were good, but when, that, that, when, we, when we heard about that first major hurricane that may have been coming through, I was kind of like, like, okay, this is really going to be a test of how well they built our house. You know, because it's like, you know, as long as everything is okay, it's standing. Right. And, and, and as far as even as Jesus was talking about uh, the, the one who built their, their house on, the, on sand and then the one who built their house on a rock, when, he, when, when, they, when they got done, both houses looked the same. You couldn't tell the difference. Now, it was only till the storm came yes. that you were able to tell the difference. Yes. And that's how it is with our lives. It's only, in, you know, we all can smile up here in church. On, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. Get everybody up here dancing like me in the morning, man. Right. Nobody knows the difference, man. Yeah. No one will have any idea what I went through last night Hallelujah. based on how I danced this morning. And it's the same thing with each and every one of you. No one will know how you, you know what happened in your life. No one. But until that storm comes. Yeah, and it will come. And it, come on, Sister Mary, and it will come. Yes. And the storm is going to come. And then depending on what's, what you build your life on. Yes. What rock have you built your life on? Yes. <laughs> That's that old song says, storms may come, the winds may blow. What was that? You were singing that the other day. Uh-oh, though the storms keep on raising. <laughs> you see, you can do it better than I can, bro. You probably even, you ready? You ready? Be y'all so ready, man. Come on now. Don't play with me, bro. Be ready. <laughs> and so based on our lives, man, we have to be very, very careful because, yes, the storm is going to come. Is your life stormproof? ha <laughs> ha and you can't wait until the storm come to try to start making, to start deciding. Like I was like when I said that first hurricane came through and I'm like, hmm, one of my house is stormproof. <laughs> you know, but when it comes down to our lives, you can't take those chances. We, we can't take those chances because you never know. Things coming on in our lives. There's, there's some things that, that has come up in my life. I didn't expect it to. You know, we didn't expect it. And yet, bam, out of nowhere. Jesus. And you ask yourself, or you be asking God, where did this come from? And you ask God, why? Yes. And then there are times that, that you don't even get an answer. Right. I was talking with someone yesterday, and we were talking about their testimony, how God brought them through. And I'm not going to name any names, but they were talking about how God brought them through some stuff. And they said they was asking God, God, why? Why did you have to do this? Why did you have to do this to me? Why did you allow this to happen? And this person told me that they didn't even get the answer to like seven. I think she said seven years later. Seven years later when, she was, when this person was about to, 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 to minister. And this person was going into their, you know, just praying and seeking the Lord about what to minister about. And the Lord began to reveal to her. I done said her so many times, so now, but I ain't going to put no name on it. Y'all know Pastor Matt, sometimes I can't hold water. That's why I'm under construction, y'all. I told y'all, man. <laughs> I can hold water now. Just don't fill up, don't, fill, don't overfill it. Don't fill it to the rim. All right, because it's going to splash over. So, you know, when I say stop, stop. <laughs> you know, some of the cups they got inside, you got a little, they got the line inside. I tell you, yeah, yeah, fill it right to that line. And you go above that line. You don't mess up. <laughs> my God, my God. 
And so Jesus says this in verse 24, back in Matthew chapter, chapter 7. You don't have to go back to it, but verse chapter 7, I mean Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. He said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. He said, you got to put them into practice. You got to put them into practice. Uh, I, was, I, I was told that, um, that, you know, what is it that, that, that when, when we're doing things and we practice, they said this old cliche says practice makes perfect. Yeah. I found out that practice doesn't make perfect. <laughs> it, it might make it better, but it don't make it perfect. Mm. I think because what, and when we get to the fact, the fact where we get to the point where we think that practice is going to make it perfect, then we we're, we're, we're get so high minded where we feel like there's no more room for improvement. Right. Practice doesn't make it better. I mean, it doesn't make it perfect. It makes it better. And that's what God is asking of us. He's, he's saying, perfect it. I want you to be like me. He said, be perfect for I am perfect. But then he says, he said, I want you to continue to work on this thing. I want you to continue to practice this thing. Practice what I'm teaching you. And this is what Jesus says. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, meaning, meaning that you have to do something with it. Don't just listen, but put it into practice. I'm giving, you, I'm giving you some things, and I want you to put it into practice, he said, because like, you're, you're, you're like a wise man who builds his house on a rock when you put it into practice. You're like a wise man when you do it when I ask you to do. You see, when it comes down to spiritual living and building, you don't go to the next level. You don't just go to the next level just by practicing it when it, when it comes to our spiritual living. You just don't go to the next level. You, you, you grow to the next le- level. You, you build to the next level. Yeah. You don't just go there without no work. Right. It's work, man. You don't just go there. Right. You have to build your way there. You have, to, you have to build your way to the next level. Mm. You have to grow your way to the next level. Some of us know that there's some growing pains. Yes, We're talking about growing, man. Now, now be ready to experience some growing pains. And so, so you, you grow to the next level. Mm. And in our spiritual walk with God, and, and Paul described this, Let's go to let's go to Second Peter first. Let me, let's go to Second Peter chapter one verse three. Read this verse. Second Peter, verse three. In the New King James Version. Second Peter verse three. Uh, first Second Peter chapter one. I'm sorry. Chapter one verse three. Chapter one verse three. First of Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. There we go. It says um, in the New Living Trans in the New King James Version. Is that it? Where am I? Chapter one. Chapter one. Is that Second Peter? Second Peter. Chapter one. Chapter one. Okay. Chapter one. But we got to reverse. Reverse them. Chapter one, verse three. There we go. Thought I didn't do my homework for a minute there, bro. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to go home. No, I wasn't, y'all. Forgive me. I wasn't going to go home, y'all. I was going to be sad, though. As his divine power has given to us all things. Y'all listen now. As his divine power, talking about Jesus Christ, talking about God himself. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Says by because of his grace, because of what, what he's because of his divine power, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by by, uh, by glory and virtue. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So in our spiritual walk with God. He's talking about, he says, as those things that pertain as far as life and uh, life and godliness, he's given us all these things. There will be in this walk, in this walk that we're that we have, because he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, that there are going to be some things in our lives as we walk this spiritual walk. There's going to be some things that's going to be taught. Somebody's going to teach you some things. And and as they teach it to us, it's coming out of the logos, the logos. You can pick up the Bible and it's the logos. It's the written word of God. And and you're able to be taught out of it. So there's some things that you're going to be taught. And then there are going to be some things in this spiritual walk that's going to have to be caught. Caught in the spirit, meaning that you're going to have to get revelation. God God himself. And that's that's rhema. 
That's rhema word. Both words now are Greek. Logos and rhema. These are Greek words. Logos is a practical word. The Bible that we picked up, that's a logos, logos word. A sinner can pick up a logos word and get something out of it. A saint can pick up the logos word and get a spiritual revelation out of it and get a rhema word. A rhema word is a word that's coming directly to you from God. It's a spiritual, spiritual manifestation of what, God, what God's trying to tell you. Specifically for you. It's a rhema word. It's a rhema word. And see, so there's a difference. And so if we're not walking in the spirit, you're, all you're doing is reading the, the logos word. And you'll still benefit from it. That's the thing about the, the Bible. A sinner can benefit from the Bible. Many of us do. Many of us. Many of them do. I'm starting to sound like uh, 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 Johnny McClurkin. But a saint is just a sinner who fell down but got back up. No, a saint is not a sinner who fell down and got back up. A saint is someone who's been redeemed by Christ, no longer a sinner. I'm no longer a sinner. And I, I may fall and I'll get back up. But I'm no longer a sinner. I'm not classified as a sinner anymore. But a sinner can read the Logos word, get something out of it, and prosper in this world. Why do you think David, if so many times in the book of Psalms, David was complaining about the sinner. He would go to God and say, God, how are they prospering? God, why this? Why they got more money than me? Why they got this? God, why are they coming after me? And he would complain about the sinner. And God was like, vengeance is mine, son. Don't worry about it because the day's going to come where they, gonna, where, they, where they will not have what you're going to have. And so we have to be mindful of that. We have to be mindful of that. And so our spiritual walk, and I was talking about, I don't know how I got on that, talking about Logos and Rhema. But we have to understand that in our, in our spiritual walk, we're looking, we're always looking for that Rhema word. We're looking for the Rhema word. We're looking for God to speak directly to us on our behalf. Because as we're under construction, each and every one of us need different things fixed, different things built. And so we can't compare ourselves to each other because we're different. That's good. Yes, and what, brother, what, what this brother need is different from what I need. Right, and what I need is different from what he need. Right. And so I can't compare myself. When I see him progression and, and what he's doing, I'm like, man, why I can't get a Mercedes Benz, you know, what's that model that you want right now, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Said he ain't even thought about it. I should have, I should have had something to one of the mother. Let me ask one of the young brothers over here. <laughs> and, and they end up with it and I'm wondering why I can't get it and God's like Cause, you know there's some things inside me that, that, some things inside of you that I'm, I'm building please excuse our mess while we're renovating God said I'm renovating you yes. and this is the thing that as he's renovating us we have to like hey you know work with me y'all you know, work with me. I'm, I'm on the renovation. Work with me. What's the other one over here? Please excuse our uh, appearance. Because <laughs> sometimes I get angry. And I know the Bible says get angry but sin not. But sometimes, you know, I just lose control and I ain't got, and I just need to, I, I'm under construction. And so please forgive me. And even as a saint, how many of us as a saint of God, been in the church a long time, still have to find ourselves asking for forgiveness? Yeah. Wait a minute, you're a saint. You got it all right. Come on now, you got it going on. You don't falter, you don't fail. What you need to ask for forgiveness for? You got it all together. And God's like, no, you don't. You're under construction. You're under veneration. Under veneration. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, bro. Go to, go to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 13 in the New King James Version. Matthew chapter 13, New King James Version, verses 10 and 11. New King James Version, Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 11. Get my hat leaning, boy. I look kind of cool for this day, boy. Look at that. Yeah, you got to do that to the side. Okay, Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. It says, and the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. 
the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. There are mysteries that God wants to reveal to us through his rhema word. There's mysteries that he can only reveal to the saints. Mysteries. Uh, one version says there's mystery, uh, uh, mysteries of the kingdom of God. There's mysteries, and, but if, you, if you're missing the Lord, if you're missing his instructions, you're going to miss because in, his, in those mysteries, he's going to give you an advantage. There's an advantage of knowing, knowing things that no one else can know. That's, there's an advantage of having godly wisdom opposed to uh, uh, you know, just a little wisdom going to school and learning a little bit. There's some wisdom. There's some wisdom because there's another cliche. Uh, 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 experience is the best teacher. No, it's not. I can learn so much more just 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 by just by hearing the Holy Spirit tell me what to do, and I'll I'll know what not to do, That's right. okay. and don't ha ever have to experience it. That's right. You don't have to experience it to become wise in it. Amen. But if the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you, you'll know you have knowledge about something, and you don't even, you have never had to go through it before. And I know the world says, well, how can you talk to a drug addict if you've never been on drugs before? Because the Holy Spirit has, has intervened in, in, in my life and has told me what's going on in the life of that drug addict. Give me the, 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 the reveals to me mysteries that's going on in his, in his life. And I can tell him by prophecy. I'll be able to tell him by prophecy what thus saith the Lord. God didn't have to be a drug addict to know everything that's going on with us. He didn't have to be a fornicator. He didn't have to be an adulteress. He didn't have to be. The Bible says that he came, Jesus Christ came to this earth and he was sinless. But yet he says that he, 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 was, a, 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 he was a man just like us. That he was able to bear, he bear all the things that we've gone through. But he didn't experience it all. So how? How? Because the spirit of the Lord was able to reveal to him the mysteries of those things. Ephesians chapter 10, verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, New King James Version. Ephesians 2 and 10. It says that, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. Come on, saints. Good works. We've been created for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We were created for good works. And so he's building. He's building. He's, and he's building things up in us. But he's cre creating some stuff in us for good works. For good works. Proverbs chapter 16, bro. Let's jump down to that. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Proverbs in the New King James Version, Proverbs 16 and 3. It says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. So he's saying that all this stuff that I got going on in my life, all this work that needs to happen in me, all this work that's going on, all this renovation. He says, I need to commit it to the Lord. I need to commit it to the Lord. If I commit it to the Lord, he, said, he says, if, if I commit it to the Lord, look, my thoughts will be established, meaning that now I have good thoughts. Now if I have good thoughts, I, I can make good decisions. If I have good thoughts, if, if I allow him to establish things in my life, he's going to establish my thoughts. Ah, I can think clearly now. Yeah. This old song, I think it came out in the 70s or 80s. It said, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Yeah. I can see all the obstacles in my way. I think I can make it now. Uh, no. <laughs> the rain is gone. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshine and day. See, see, I'm way older than her. See, 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 you know, they said, they said, I, when I, I, what they call that? They stole, you stole the, robbed the cradle or something like that? They said I robbed the cradle when I married my wife. It's all right, baby. It's all right. I'll, t I'll teach you that song when we get home. You know, we can bring, up, bring it all up now on the, on the, on the, on the, on the devices so she'll, she'll know when she hears it. She, she don't hear it from me because I don't sound like it, you know. But, 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 but Proverbs is telling us that we commit our works to the Lord, the works. So we're trying to work on ourselves. Yes. We're trying to work on ourselves. We're always trying to do it on ourselves. I heard somebody say the other day, look, when I get myself together, right. I'm going to start coming to church. When I get myself together, I'm going to come. I, I'm working on some stuff. 
I'm like, well, how long, how, you know, how well is that working for you right now? How long have you been saying this? Right. Uh, about 10 years now. And, and, and so what's happening? What are you working on? Right. What are you working on now? Us, oh, well, I'm still working on my attitude. <laughs> and, and, and as I'm thinking about that, I'm like, God, we got so many areas in our lives and just dirty areas in our lives that we're trying to work on. This is too small, but it says lying. This right here says bad attitude. So we got all these areas in our lives, bad attitude, lying. We, I'm working on it, though. I'm working on it. I'm a saint, but I'm working on it. I'm, Mrs. Mayor, I'm working on it. I know, I know, Sister Mary, I lied to you just yesterday, and I told you yesterday, I told you two days ago, I wasn't going to lie to you. Yes. And I lied again yesterday, but Sister Mary, please believe me, I'm working on it. Yes. I'm working on it. <laughs> Baby, I know I yelled at you. Please forgive me. I got a bad attitude. I can't tell you. I can't find up no excuse. No excuse. I got a bad attitude. Yes. I got a bad attitude. My attitude is bad. I know my attitude stinks. Yes. <laughs> I know it, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it, sis. Please don't let this be a deal breaker. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah. Uh-oh, oh. Alcohol. Baby, I said I'm going to stop drinking. I'm working on it. Uh, and, I, and really, I only drink when I want to, so I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I only drink when I want to. I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> Pornography. Oh, I got caught again. Pornography. I'm working on it. God, I heard you. I know you told me to stop. I know if I don't stop, you're going to reveal it. You're gonna, God, I know you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pull the curtain on me. I know it, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Adultery, fornication, sex. You know, sex outside of marriage. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, my God. What's, uh, add some more attitude. Ooh, ooh. Look, stop lying. Got a stop sign. Stop lying. <laughs> but I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Under construction. I'm under construction. And, and, and the truth be told, the new me is coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming soon. Under construction. The new me is coming soon. But it can come sooner than later yeah. if I allow God yeah. to establish my thoughts. Yeah. It'll come sooner or later if I allow God yeah. to establish my life. Yeah. Yeah. It'll come sooner or later, later if I trust in the Lord yeah. with all my heart. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 verse, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, and we're going to read 5 through 8 in the New Living Translation. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 in the New Living Translation. And this is the thing, saints, saints that have been in church for a long time, y'all probably know this verbatim. But really, are we living this thing, though? Are we really, really, really trusting in the Lord with all our hearts? The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't think you can do this. Don't think you can work it out on your own. And this, 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 this building right here, it takes a master builder on, to build this temple. Yes. It takes a master builder yes. to come in here and take some things and move some things. And yes. you know, a, a master builder to come in with a structure that's already built, come in and take some stuff out, and the whole building never falls. Because he knows what he's doing. He can go in. He's an expert. He can go in there, take this beam out, move this beam over here, construct yes. this beam, and the building never falls. Woo. What? Gut it out. Gut it out and the building never falls. Master builder. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Verse 6, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. He'll tell you. He'll show you. Verse 7, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. I talked about that. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. You ain't smarter than you think you are. Amen. You ain't that smart. Amen. You can't do it by yourself. Stop thinking you can do it by yourself. You can't. Stop 
leaning on your own wisdom. He says, instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have, man, this is it. And I call this a benefit package. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. That's part of the benefit package. That's what we're going to receive in the natural. In the natural, when I, did, when, I did, when, I, when I made up my mind that I was going to serve the Lord with my whole heart, my mind, and I was going to depend on him, and I was going to seek his face, seek his promises, seek, seek whatever it is, his will for my life. And then when the things started going wrong in my body, I was able to lean and depend on him. And because of that, I was able to, to, to enjoy the, the, this, this package, healing for my body. Strength from my bones. Yes. 61 years old, and I probably can outrun half of you. That's over 70. Because <laughs> y'all be out here ready to challenge me. I ain't going to fall for it. I ain't going to fall for it. <laughs> but this is what God wants us to do, guys. He, he's saying that, you know, there's so much that needs to happen. I was talking to someone and someone else yesterday, and we were talking about us, saints of God. And we were talking about how our expectation as ministers and pastors and, and those that are in leaders position that, that, that's teaching you know, the, the word of God and how we just want to see God's people just flourish. And I shared with him, I said, man, the Holy Spirit shared with me, shared with me that because of God's goodness and his grace, that the saints of God right now is living, just living off of God's goodness and grace and they're satisfied because his goodness and grace is just so good. They don't even have to strive. For it. They don't want to strive for anything more because they're satisfied with, his, with, with what he's already given them because he's so good. And we can, we're just resting in the good enough. And God is saying, man, I've got more than enough for you. I can give you more where it's overflowing. But y'all, you're settling for just good enough. And but the saints of God are saying, you know what? This is good enough for me. And it's good enough for you because I know, you know, for, for most of us, it's where we came from. And if, if, where you, if where you are is better than where you came from, we can become complacent. And I think that's what's ha- that's, that's, this is what has happened in the church of God, is that we've, com- we've, come, we've become complacent with God's goodness. And when God's goodness is just really just, it's just the bare surface of what he's able to do. In our lives. Can you imagine that? that? That the goodness that you're living in right now is just the bare minimum? The bare minimum? Because the Bible tells me, now unto him who is able to do exceeding That's it. That's it. abundantly That's it. above all that you can ask or think. He said, above all, you, whatever you think about, I can do better. I can do greater. Yes, Lord. And he's saying, but you want to live at the just good enough. And, this is, and as we live on the, 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 that plane of just good enough, this is where we, we're, we're, we're really being challenged because this is where we have to be careful, as I read earlier, that we're going to scarcely make it in. Scarcely make it in because God desires greater. He's asking us to do greater. He said, why would Jesus say greater works will you do after he's gone? Why would he tell us greater works will we do? If, 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 and, and, but yet, we're not doing greater works. But we're good at pointing the finger at who ain't doing good works. Well, they, that, they need to get fixed over there. They need to get this right. You, you need to, you need, you, you know, yep, this, this need to come up. This, this, you need to fix this. You, and we, man, we're good to judge. But as we did communion today, the Bible says take a moment and judge yourself. And let's take a self inventory. Let's take, do an inventory. And see what kind of works need to be done. I know, I know some of the areas we're in. Look, we, sometimes whatever that's going on, we, we need the sign. Danger, construction area, keep out. We need to tell people, don't, don't come my way. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I know this is not a good time for me. Because what you're going to see is going to be ugly. My, my mama used to say, God don't like ugly. And she wasn't talking about the, the, the face either. She was talking about the behavior. She's talking about the attitude. She's talking about your character. And for a long time, I didn't understand that as a child. But as I got older, I began to understand that because I saw the ugliness in me. And I had a revelation like, oh, that's what mama meant. I was acting ugly. 
And God was displeased. That ain't a restricted area. This is the thing, though, saints. This is the thing. That as God continues to work on these things. Y'all heard me say this before. That we can't. We can't keep that sign in the same spot. If, if it's anger. Eventually, we give it to God. The anger goes away. Eventually, as we talk about it, where's the anger? The attitude. That, that, I mean, that'll last for a little bit, but as we give it to God, it's done. He's done worked it out. Attitude, done. God done worked it out. What else we dealing with? What else we dealing with? Lying. Give it to God. Give it to God. And see, so you, you can't keep this sign there, but, but so long, excuse the mess. Please excuse our mess. We're, we're under renovation. You can't keep it there so long, not when God's got it. As the church of God, come on now. How long can, can saints say that God is still working on my tongue? God's still working on my lying tongue. As the saints of God, how long can we say that? But when we give it to God, he works it out. He works it out. Pornography. Some, some, and some of us have a hard time with it. But I'll tell I'm, God, y'all know I love to be transparent. You know I love to be transparent. Thank you, Lord. I had a problem with pornography. But the more I gave it to God, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you when the last time I looked at pornography. Years. I ain't talking about days and weeks. And for some of us, weeks is an achievement. God, and I'm not, I'm not minimizing your, your, your commitment to, to getting better. I'm not minimizing your commitment or your progress. If you've given it to God, if it's been one day, praise God. We celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. But I will tell you as my testimony, the Bible tells us that, that, that by the, through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we're overcomers. Overcomers. And I'm testifying that I used to have a problem with pornography. Not no more. God's taking it away. I don't have a problem with it anymore. I don't, is it the, he's taking the desire. But it didn't happen overnight. Right. And it didn't happen by me in my own wisdom saying, I'm just going I'm, I'm to stop. Right. I'm not going to cut it on no more. You know how many times I said that? Right. And didn't cut it on? Right. And said, so I ain't going to stay that long. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And, right. then, and then there. Right. But I gave it to God. Turned it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Oh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus will work it out. Jesus will work it out. This problem that I had, I had. <laughs> we can sing it, right? We are sing it. The problem that I had, I had. <laughs> and then go home and we're dealing with all this stuff, y'all. We're dealing with it. Lying, cheating. We're dealing with it. And we're dealing with it because we ain't giving it to God, y'all. Hallelujah. And then we're making up excuses. We keep putting it there saying, I'm, I'm work in progress. I'm working progress. Please forgive me. Excuse my parent. I'm working progress. And God's like, I'm tired of that. No, it's time for you to move out of here. Get, the, get that out of the way. I got better things. And every time a saint says, I'm working progress and we don't get any better, we're, 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 we're well, number one, we're deceiving ourselves. And number two, we're, we're, as far as God is concerned, we're making God look smaller than our problems, smaller than our habits. When every time we're saying that we're a work in progress and God ain't done it yet, we're minimizing God's greatness and his power. We're minimizing it. My God. Two more scriptures. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2 in the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter 2 in the New Living Translation, verses 12 and 13. Mm, my God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13 in the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter 2, there we go, 12. It says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, 
it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do do y'all see? Do you hear that? He says God is giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. It's like it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's like he's giving us the answer to the test. Yes. We're already won. Yes. The victory's already ours. He's given us the power. He's given us the desire. You know, y'all familiar with the scripture, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart? Well, when you delight yourself in the Lord, when you give yourself to him, when you allow yourself to be, uh, uh, to be molded and made by him, he says, I, now I'm able to give you the desires of your heart. And in that package, in the desires of the heart, what I'm giving you is the strength to be able to overcome. I'm giving you, I'm changing your desires so you no longer desire pornography anymore. I'm changing the desire for you to not to want to get angry or not to want to fight back. I'm changing your desires. He says, I'm changing your desires. My God. Let's close with Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1 in the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 in the New Living Translation. Here we go. It says, I am and I am certain that God, capital G, Not small G, not the little G. You see, we're little G's. God is the big G. So I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, see that? He, He began the good work in you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returned. That means it's work in progress. Work in progress. Now, what the thing that we have to do is that as we're working progress, stay away from condemnation, but seek after conviction. What's the difference, Pastor? Conviction is where you seek in the Lord and God comes in and he speaks to you and he gives you a revelation of what you're doing. And he's saying that I'm dissatisfied with this. I want this is what you need to do to fix this. I'm dissatisfied with it. Well, Pastor, uh, but, but, but God, so and so is doing it, and God's saying, No, I'm talking specifically to you. This, this, this is this is this is this is this is Rhema word. I'm, I'm talking directly to you. This is what I want you to do. And He'll give us instructions on what to do. He said, Because I begin to work in you, but this is what I need you to do. I need you to work it out. And I know you're a work in progress, but I need you to work it out. And and the thing that we have to understand about God is that God will only do what we give him permission to do in our lives. You got to give him permission. He's given us the the greatest gift, and it's probably a curse for some of us. The greatest gift he's given us is the gift of free will. And for some of us, it's a curse because we we don't know what to do with it. (laughs) We fail, we falter, we, we get down, we get back up. And we can't even get up long enough before we get knocked back down again. But he's given us a free will. But he's saying that I want you to take your free will. And I want you to seek yourself with seek your, seek my face on your free will. He said, I'm giving you a free will because if I, if I made you love me, it wouldn't be love at all. If I made you follow me, then it wouldn't be. You're not doing it out of obedience. You're doing it out of fear. He said, I want you to I just want you to follow me because I have something better for you. God's got something better for us. And I, I know all of us, we're under construction. But we can be so much better. We can, we can, I mean, we can be so much better. Why settle for just good enough when God has more than enough for your lives? Amen? Amen. That's all we're going to do today. That's all we're going to do today. Praise God. Amen. I will ask, ask again. I need you to stand. I need you to stand. We're going to, you know, we were, I've done a lot of talking and, and a lot of teaching. And I, I hope that someone today heard not just my voice, 
but they heard the voice of God today. The voice of God telling you that it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late to change your life around. It's not too late to give God your life. It's not too late. Too late. It's not too late to allow him to renovate those things that need renovation. It's not too late. Yeah, the Bible says that we're going to scarcely make it in. But guess what? As long as there's breath in our, in our lungs, we, we have an opportunity to make it in. <laughs> and some of us, look, I'd be grateful just to scarcely make it in, to be honest. That's not my goal. That's not what I'm working on. And I, my goal is to, that I don't want to just scarcely make it in. I want When, he, when I get before the, the Father, I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want him to welcome me in with, with open arms. I don't want him to look at me and say, like, you know, you barely made it. By the skin of your teeth, you barely made it. I don't want that. I want him to say, come on in, my son. Man, you've done great. You've represented me well. Man, when I said I, I, when I, said I needed ambassadors here on the earth, you are my ambassador. That's what I want God to be able to say. And he's given us the tools to do it. And so this today, this moment right now, this moment is for anyone who, who never, who's never given their life to Christ before. You've never given your life to Christ before. You, maybe you think you're saved because you were brought up in a, in a church. You know, some of us were brought up in a Baptist church. And, and because we were brought up in church and we went to church with grandma and mama and them and, and, and daddy and them. And, and, and because we were in church, we saved now. That's not getting saved. That's no more of you, you, you being saved. No more of us taking a car or taking you, putting you into a garage, making you a car. It's no different. You don't become a car because you walked into a garage. And so walking into a church just doesn't make you saved because you've walked into a church or you grew up in a church. It takes some work. It takes, it takes some work. It takes, number one, it takes just the confession of acknowledging the fact that I'm a sinner. And, and I, need, I need to get fixed. I need, I need some renovation. I need, I need you to come in and, and reconstruct some stuff in me, God. Please forgive me. It takes that first step. And then from that point forward, then we allow him to start working on us. Start working on us. And then for anybody who has given their life to Christ, you've been saved before, but you backslid. You went back out there, you started doing some things, and, and some of the things you did was kind of subtle. But then as, as you continue to live, you find yourself doing it more and more and more. And next thing you know, you're not going to church anymore. Your prayer life has changed. You're not even praying anymore. You really don't know what happened. But one thing you do know is that you're not happy anymore. That there's, there's something missing. And it's like a fish being out of water. And you're searching for this thing to fulfill this void. And you're never going. You, you go to this person and this person not fulfilling that void. And, and you go to this, to this restaurant and get your favorite meal. And you eat, you get full. But the moment that it's over with, you like, I'm still needing something. And you call mama. Mama, I just need to talk to somebody. And the conversation gets over with. And at midnight hour, you still need something. And you find out that there's a void. And what I found out is that the only thing that can fulfill that void, that can fill that void, is God himself coming into your life and allowing you to work, allowing him to work this thing out in your life. And so if this is you for the very first time, never giving your life to the Lord, you can do that right now. I'm going to say a prayer. It's called a prayer of salvation. And the same prayer is for anyone who wants to rededicate their life to the Lord. This is a prayer of salvation, a prayer of rededication. It's a simple word. The important thing about this prayer, though, is that you say it from your heart. And don't worry about who hears you. Don't worry about what, don't, don't try to think about what you're going to do after the prayer. Don't think about the fact that, oh, I'm saved now, now I got to change, now I got to throw out all my, all my music, now I got to get rid of this, and I got to get rid of that. I just talked about all that. All that. You can't do it yourself. Right. Turn it over to God and allow him to work it out. Yes. Don't try to be like what everybody else is doing. Oh, my cousin threw all her albums away or all her CDs away. I need to do that because, because, I, because I admire her, 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 her life. Let me be honest with you. Most of us don't know what any of us are doing behind closed doors. Hallelujah. It may look good on the outside, yeah. but as, as I said earlier, all of us are under construction. Yes. All of us. 
that's you, you want to give your life to the Lord and you want to rededicate your life today, say this prayer with me. And saints of God, I know you're saved already, but I want you to say it because I want you to encourage someone who may be standing and sitting next to you and may just need, just need someone to know that they're not alone. That they, they, need, they need to know that, know that they're, they're not alone. And for those of you that are watching virtually, you can say this prayer with us as well. Come on, let's go. Father God, Father God. You, know life, you know my life and you know how I've lived it. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for me. They buried him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. That power. It's what saves me. Thank you, Father, for saving me and giving me new life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Can we applaud anybody that may have done that today? Amen. We applaud you. If you said that prayer, whether or not it was a rededication or you just praying this prayer for the very first time, you belong to God now. Don't stop the commun communication. What we just did was an opening door of communication, but you got to keep on talking to him. Keep talking to the Lord, ask him for his advice, ask him for direction. Tell him, God, I don't want to have to experience it. If I don't have to go to go through it. I don't want to have to, if I don't have to show me what to do and watch God do a wonderful work in your lives. You belong to God now. And we're so happy. The Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul. Now for anyone that may be here, if you giving your life to the Lord today, I want to meet with you right over here just for a few minutes. I want to, number one, I want to just, you know, just congratulate you for the decision that you made today. Number two, if you allow me to, I want to pray with you one more time just to, just to you know, solidify and just to cover you as you walk out this door. Because the truth be told that as soon as you walk out this door, the devil has already planned an attack on your life. He's already planned an attack on your life, but I'm not going to let him. I'm not. I look over, look, as we say, over my dead body. I'm not going to let him. I'm not going to let him attack you with, with, if I got anything to do with it. And Jesus, your big brother, he's not going to allow, allow it to happen either. And so we want to cover you. Amen. Amen. Also want to give anyone an opportunity. If you want to partner with us, if you never partnered with us before, you partnering with us is different from just coming in and just, you know, serving with us. Partnering with us says that it says that you're committing to us. You're committing to this church. You're committing to the work that the Lord has placed in this community. And you're committing your life. You're committing, you're committing, not your, your, when I say your life, don't take that literally. You're committing the work of your hands. You're committing your time, your talent, and your treasures if, if need be to help support this ministry. And you're doing it. And, you're, and we can call and depend on you. But if you're just volunteering here, we love you. We don't love anyone no less. We love you for that as well. But I can't call on a volunteer as I can call, like I can call on someone who's committed, someone who's partnered with us. I can call on, I call on a partner before I call on someone who's just volunteer because you've committed to, and you said that you're willing to help. And so if you want to do that today, you can also do that. I will still, again, be over here and then we'll pray and we'll give you the proper documentation that you need. It'll only take a few minutes and then you'll be on your way. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask my lovely wife to come up. Yup, this is my wife, y'all. This is my wife. How you doing? Well. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. I'm working progress. Please excuse the mess. I'm working progress, girl. But we've been married. We've been celebrating. Uh, next year, we will be celebrating our 20th year. Next month, I'm sorry. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> next month, we'll be celebrating our 20-year anniversary. And um, all that I talked about today... She, 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 she's witnessed, we've witnessed each other in our growing pains and our life changes and things that come our way that we didn't expect happen. We've, we've, we've seen God work and do things, and he's still doing these things. And so if we can make it. We know you all can. And we're just, we're just when we look at it around the room, we're just a small, uh, when we say 20 years, that's small compared to some of the brothers and sisters that I know that's here. How many, Cliff? 33. 33. 33. Come on, Elder. I know you don't want to tell it. Tell it, Elder. Don't, don't get nervous. 
40 something, that's good enough. Look, look, after a while, it just don't count no more, right? Because ain't nothing, there ain't no sense of counting. We ain't going nowhere. Amen. 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 We love you guys so much. Let me speak a word over your life, a word of benediction over your life. Father, we thank you for these, your people. We ask that you cover them and keep them in perfect peace, that their minds will remain stayed on you. I pray that the word that was deposited in their hearts today, Father, let there be a harvest. Let there be a change in their life. Let them begin to seek you like they've never sought you before. And I pray, Father, that you will not disappoint. God, you're going to do everything in their lives, God, that they know and you know need to be done. I pray, God, for their health, for their life, for their strength. I pray for favor over their lives. I pray, Father, that they, as they go, that they're blessed. As they come, they're blessed. I pray, Father, that they're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens them. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Pastor T. This is Pastor Latrilla here at the Bridge Church of Alabama where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. You guys know what's up? I'm out. God bless you. Deuces. Amen. 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 First time guest, I do want to meet with you, meet with you if you don't mind. Please give me a moment to meet with you. Hey. Mm-hmm.